right now. So everyone should be there. Hello, welcome everyone on YouTube. Welcome to the course. This is Manifesting an Extraordinary Future, and I have an entire workshop for you, which I'm very excited to share. I created this workshop just before Christmas for the Rebel Business School team, and I delivered it to them. It went so well that I then delivered it for the Rebel Columbia team, and then I was like, I need to share this with everyone. So I built this workshop for you. And it comes from when I first started going to workshops myself, I go to all these different workshops about how to earn money, how to build a business, all this different stuff. And I would turn up and they'd be telling me that you need to get your mindset straight. And I'd be sat there going, I don't care about that. Just tell me what to do. That's all I want to know is what to do. Tell me how to invest. Tell me how to do this. Tell me how to do that. That's all I wanted to do. And they kept repeating that success is 80% mindset, how you think what you do with your mind each and every single day. But I didn't care about that. I was just like, tell me what to do. But then as I've got older, I'm 45 now. Uh, some of you will be shocked to know that with my wonderful complexion. Uh, but this year we've run uh, financial independence workshops all around the world. And we tell people how to get to financial independence. And I could probably explain it in about two sentences. Create a gap between your income and your expenses. Use that gap to buy assets like the FTSE Global All Cap Index. But I can say that to people, but what percentage of people do you think would follow through? Do you think they'd actually do it? Like type it in the comments. It really helps me to see that you do it. But what do you think? Do you think people would actually do it? Do you think they would follow through? Do you think they would invest? Or do they need more than that? And I found it fascinating like we run the entire Rebel Finance School. People come on 10 weeks of our workshops and then we chat to them about their finances. And then we had one guy who immediately went off and bought cryptocurrency. And we had another person like I showed them the way, the path, and they did the exact opposite. People are saying about maybe 10 percent would follow through. About 10 percent would follow through. Someone else said 3 percent. Yeah, I don't have an exact stat for you, but I feel it will be quite low and it is incredible. And this led me to thought of why isn't every librarian a billionaire? If more knowledge was the answer, librarians have access to every book, every piece of information, books on how to get wealthy, how to build businesses, how to do anything. If more knowledge was the answer, why isn't every librarian a billionaire? Well, it's not. How to is available everywhere. There is so much how-to, it's unbelievable. The challenge comes in our way of thinking, our mindset. It's our values, our beliefs, our possibility that tells us whether we can follow through or not. And this is what this workshop is all about. We've got six more workshops packed with how-to stuff like the money game, how to play and win it, how to reduce your spending and live larger. We've got how to increase your income, create a side hustle, the pension stuff. We've got all of that coming up. But before we do that, we need to get the mindset straight because if we haven't got that straight, nothing else works. And the key concept for this entire workshop, which I would love you to write down to emblazon into your mind, is thoughts become things. Your thoughts become things. So then you start to ask the question, what are you thinking about every day? Lucy, what are you thinking about? Robert, what are you thinking about? Tell us, Daniel, like what goes through your mind every day? Actually, Daniel, don't tell me what goes through your mind every day. I'm a little bit worried about that. But what goes through your mind every day? And are you thinking about this incredible future? Or are you thinking about other things? The fundamental belief that I have is if you think it, 
you can create it, you can build it, you can make it, but you've got to think it first. And the concept that everything is made up really struck me recently. Literally everything is made up. Someone created Zoom, someone created the email, someone created YouTube. Thank you, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, governments created the laws. I was really inspired. We were in Korea last year and in South Korea, we went to the building where the king of South Korea created the language. Like he literally made up the language. He went into the building, made up the language and then told everyone about it. And everything, the words that we say, the houses we live in, it is all made up. And this quote really struck me. It was from Steve Jobs. He said, everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, you can build your own things on top that other people built. And I think I found that thought really freeing, that if it's all made up, well, I can make stuff up. And here's some of the lessons I took from that. And I did want to say, yes, even universities make things up. Like Everything is made up. And what I really took from that, the four things I took from that was, number one, everything is negotiable. I don't care what it is. A price, uh, a business deal, uh, the way things work, where you live, who you're with, everything is negotiable. And when you start to operate from a place that everything is negotiable, you start to realize you have more influence over the world than you imagine. The second thing that really struck me is we can build on what already exists. Some amazing person has built YouTube and then we have built our channel on top of it. Some amazing person built Spotify for podcasters and you can launch a podcast for free. Someone built Wix and you can build a website for free. There's all of these patterns that exist that you can build on top of. So everything is negotiable and you can build on what already exists. And you can make up stuff too. I want to free you to make things up. And my business partner and Simon and I created this course called Rebel Business School. And we learned in books, we learned in other places. We made up the course and we started running it. Now that course is in seven countries. I was literally in Mexico last week for the first ever Rebel Business School in Mexico, and it's becoming a global movement. And we made that up. Why do I put it in language like that? Because I want to free you to make things up too. I want you to be able to make things up and create the life you actually want. So everything's negotiable. You can build on top of what already exists. You are free to make stuff up and you have the power to create anything. You might not believe it yet, but you have the power to create everything. So the question that always comes is why isn't everyone millionaires driving Lamborghinis? If this is all true, it sounds too good to be true. Like if I can make stuff up, if I can do anything, why isn't everyone millionaires and driving Lamborghinis or their version of that? Please tell me in the chat, like why aren't, why isn't everyone a millionaire? Why is that not possible? What do you think? Amber says timing. Stacy says mindset. Amber also says luck. Uh, Bridget says fear gets in the way. Fear is a huge one. Alexandra says laziness, which is actually the next one on. Daniel says motivation to follow through, which I think is the flip side. Excuses. Lucy says overwhelm. Katie? On YouTube, we've got Alex saying mindset. Jamie saying scared. They stop imagining and believing themselves. People are foolish with money, ideas, limiting beliefs. Chicken, says someone. Chicken. Um, Which I'm assuming is fear rather than a lack of protein. Yeah. 
uh, because some of us are sadly sayers and not doers, says Jeff, which is very insightful. Procrastination, patience, not everyone is creative, lack of education. Devinda says resources are finite. That's an interesting belief. Uh, Julie says spending habits. Like there's so many reasons, but I really do think you can kind of sum them up with one or two things. And it is, what do most people think about all day? What do most people think about all day? And you've said a lot of this in the messages. They're thinking about what they can't do. They're thinking about what's not possible. Most people think about what they don't want. They spend their life thinking about what they don't want. There's a lack of resources. I don't have enough money. They think about what they don't want. And if you really think about what people focus on, what do people spend their days focused on? They're watching the news about the wars, about what's going on. They're focused about the news. Is that focusing on what they want? No. They're focusing on the headlines. They're doom scrolling on Facebook and Instagram. I have been guilty of this and you can lose an hour to Instagram and then you wake up and you think, what am I doing with my life? Uh, they get angry at comments online. Like that amount of people that spend hours doing that. They talk about the football results, the state of the economy, things that depress them. People literally spend their time focused on everything that they don't want. They ask themselves unhelpful questions, like why does it always happen to me? Why does this happen? How can I do this? People are focusing on the fact that they don't have enough money. And we've experienced this through Rebel Finance School. People say, I don't have enough money. And they stop at the first thought. They don't think I don't have enough money. Pause, what can I do about that? How can I save more? How can I increase my income? They don't do the work afterwards. They just stop at the problem and focus at the problem. It's the same with work. People tell me I hate my job. I'm bored with my job. I don't like what I'm doing. And then they just stop. As soon as someone said, hey, I hate my job, my mind goes, can we find you a job you love? Can we create something? Can we build something? But most people seem to stop there and they create or stop at what they don't want. So I have a quick exercise for you. I would like you please to look around the room where you are right now and notice everything that is green. Count how many green things you've got. Count how many green things you have. Lucy's smiling. She's probably seen about 12 green things already. Do you have green jumpers, green things? Like what have you got in the room? Notice everything that is green. Count them up, uh, put the number in the chat. And then when you've got that number, I would like you please to close your eyes. So close your eyes now. That includes you, Robert, close your eyes. Uh, and tell me how many blue things are in your room. Can you do that with your eyes closed? <laughs> Lucy's shaking her head. Okay, you can open your eyes and have a look round. Are there blue things in your room? Here's the thing, you get what you focus on. If you focus on what's green, you will find it. And then someone says, where's the blue stuff? And you haven't noticed it because you were focusing on the green. I don't know if you've seen that famous YouTube clip where there's a bunch of basketball players and you're asked to count how many passes and you focus on the passes. And in the end they say, did you notice anything weird? Uh, they replay the video and there was a dancing gorilla in the middle. You're so focused on the passes, you don't see the dancing gorilla. And that's life. It's fascinating. We get what we focus on. So if we're focused on what we don't like, we don't see the opportunity. We don't see the cool stuff around us. We just see the problem that is in front of us. And people say to us like, I'm afraid of losing money. And they're so scared of losing money that it stops them from investing. They leave their money in cash 
which literally causes the thing that they're afraid of. Because if your money sits in cash, it is eroding against inflation. It's insane. People create what they're afraid of with their thoughts. They say, I can't do this. I can't do that. They'll tell you all the reasons why they can't do things. Because most people focus on what they don't want. And that's the question for you. How much of your day are you focused on what you do want versus what you don't want? What percentage of your day are you excitedly working on the future you do want? And here's the real kicker from all of this opening piece is if thoughts become things, then you create what you fear. If you are thinking about what you're afraid of, you will create it. And we've seen this so many times with people afraid of losing money and that's all they think about. And then they start to fear that and they do things to avoid it that actually ends up creating it. It's the same in business. I'm afraid of losing my client. So we act weird and then the client goes somewhere else because they're like, why are you acting weird? We create what we fear, which destroys it. And this is one of my favorite quotes. Worrying is praying for what you don't want. So if you imagine thinking about what you do want is kind of praying for what you do want. Worrying is praying for what you don't want. So how much of your day are you spending worrying? How much of your day are you spending attracting what you don't want into your life? Because I am fascinated by that. I really want to know how much of your day you actually focused on what you do want. Because fear is just untamed imagination. Because you can imagine anything. My question to you is, do you direct your imagination? Do you let it run wild and think of everything that could go wrong? Or do you take control of your imagination and use it to imagine the future you really want? Is your imagination untamed and wild and thinking of all the things that could go wrong? Or are you using it consciously to create the life you want? Now, some of you will go, well, I don't have any fear. I just get stressed. Uh, stress is just the achiever word for fear. If you really think about it, when you say I'm stressed, it's like, what are you stressed about? The meeting going wrong. It's another way of saying I have a fear that the meeting will go wrong. I'm stressed that I've got to get all this work done. Well, you're afraid you won't get it all done. Stress is just the achiever word for fear. So if you feel stressed about stuff, what that's telling me is you're thinking about what you don't want not what you do want. If you could imagine it going well, and you were really focused on it going well, you wouldn't be feeling the stress at the same level. Now, my very smart wife, when I was talking to her about this, looked at me and said, well, Alan, how do we avoid this? This all sounds great, but how do we avoid this? How do we avoid stressing about stuff? How do we avoid thinking about what we're focused on? like?" How do we avoid these problems? Well, my answer to her was, we have to focus on what we do want. Like laser-like focus on what we do want. The challenge is our brains get so trained to think about the stress and what's going wrong that we actually have to snap our head back to focus on what we do want. And if you can do that every day, it will change your world because you'll start focusing on what you want. You'll start to feel excited about the future and you'll start to take action towards what you want. So what I want to suggest to you is to visualize, to imagine, take control of the reins of your imagination and use it to visualize the results you actually want. So maybe for five minutes a day to start with, you see life exactly as you want it in the future, whatever that is. 
And we'll come on to exactly what that is. But maybe you're happy at work. Maybe you're having a wonderful meal with your family. Maybe you're on holiday where you want to be. Maybe your finances are exactly as you want them to be. But you visualize and see life exactly as you want. And when you can see it as you what you want, create the emotion, start to feel it, start to live it and get excited about it, experience it. Because if you can do that, you'll feel the excitement and you'll want to take action. So let me give you some practical examples. Example number one is before you go to an important meeting, see it going perfectly. Now, sports professionals have been doing this forever. Before an incredible golfer takes a shot, they visualize the ball going into the hole. Before a soccer player plays a game, soccer, who am I, American? Before a footballer plays a game, you can tell I've spent too long in Mexico. Uh, before a football player plays a game, they see it going perfectly. And if they don't, you know. You know exactly. They come out and they walk onto pitch like they're going to lose and you can see it in their body language. We've known about this for years, but we don't seem to use it on our own own lives. Before the phone call, imagine the outcome that you want. Imagine the phone call going well. Rehearse it in your mind. Before starting a project, see it going incredibly well. Before we did this project, I saw it in my mind and I was thinking, like, how can we create something that will get people excited, that will help them to achieve what they want into their lives and make progress and sort out their finances? And I saw people coming. I had fun. I saw the Mexican food I'm going to go out for with Katie after the course is over. Like I saw it happening. And I, what I want to do is to say to you, if you can do that, you'll start to focus on what you want and you'll start to take action. Now, here's a classic example uh, imagine someone driving down a country road and there is a telephone post every few hundred meters. If someone skids off the road, what do you think they're going to hit? And they've studied this. There is literally more space to skid off the road and nothing happen, but everyone hits the lamppost. Why is that? Why do they hit the lamppost? It's because they're driving along, they skid, and then they're like staring at the lamppost going, I hope I don't hit that. I hope I don't hit that. I hope I don't hit that. And then what happens? They smash into the lamppost. It happened to me when I was a teenager. I smashed into a tree down a country lane just like this. I skidded the car. My eyes went straight to the tree, and guess what I hit? It destroyed the car. Um, we get what we focus on. And I wanted to show you this in so many different ways because if you're not focusing on what you want, you won't get it. If you're focusing on what you do want, you will get it. So the key is to focus on your goal. And our goal was to live on the beach. Our goal was to run courses that people come up to us and say, I loved your course. Thank you for coming along. I, my goal was to be on a TV show, is to be on a TV show one day. Who knows? I'll do a TV show about money. Our goal was to become financially independent. And we focused on that relentlessly. So my question to you is, do you know what you want in life? Do you know what to focus on? So we're going to do a poll. I would love you please to do this in the Zoom and on YouTube. And even if you're watching this on Catch Up, please do this. Do you know what you want in life? So one is I have no idea. And five, with absolute crystal clarity, I know exactly the job. I know exactly the house. I know exactly the amount. Uh, I've put a financial number on it. Three is somewhere in the between, like I've got a rough idea. Uh, two is like, I know I want to be happy, but that's about it. Like, where are you? And we've got a vote. We've got a little QR code. Katie's launching the poll in 
Zoom right now. In, I've launched it in Zoom. And if you're watching on YouTube, please, please, can you click on the Google form link that I've put in the chat um, so that we can capture your answers because we want to know and we like later. And if you're watching this on Catch Up, there is a link to the question and the Google form in the description of the video. I love that. Thank you, Katie. So please use the QR code, click on the link she's put in the chat. Please do fill in that form. It really helps us. And these workshops are being put on by our wonderful sponsors, the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. And they actually want to know, did this help you? What do you think? And all of those questions. So please do fill out that form. Use that. Use the QR code. If you're watching this to catch up, yes, please. Please do it as well. We want to know your number and the actual data because we need to prove whether this works or not and Katie's done it so you can actually see everyone's answers so if you fill in that little google form you'll actually be able to see everyone's answers after you have filled it in you won't be able to see like Jeff put five and Sheila put one yes you'll be able to see in aggregate what people put don't worry this is anonymous <laughs> Yes, it is an anonymous poll, uh, but it will show you the results, which is really fascinating. But my hypothesis is when you actually ask the average person, what do you want in life? They just don't know. Or they give you some very vague generic answer, like I want to be happy or I want to be wealthy. And they don't know with any level of detail. And that's actually the critical piece. If you don't know with detail what you want your future to be like, how can you focus on it? How can you create it? Katie's got the results up. Now seems to be most people are a three. Some people are a four. There's a couple of rare people who know exactly at number five. And that's the same between YouTube and Zoom. Most people seem to be a, a three or a four. Which is pretty good. So you are already way better than the average person out there. I think you could reach up high, give yourself a pat on the back. You've already knowing roughly what you want, which is fantastic. Let's see if we can come up with more detail and actually focus on it. So my question is, what do you focus on daily? What do you actually focus on? And I've got a second poll for this, but do you focus on the news? Like how much of the day do you spend on the news? How much of the day do you spend focused on your to-do list? Or do you watch Netflix or do you focus on the fact you don't have any money or are you focus on that your body isn't quite in the shape that you want it to be? Or are you focused on your phone and looking at social media? What do you focus on daily? And a really interesting test for this is your screen time. If you pull out your phone right now, if you have an iPhone, you can search screen time. If you have an Android, there is an app on there that shows you what do you spend your time doing? And this is actually mine from last week. So I spent an average of three hours a day on my phone, which I'm kind of shocked and repulsed by. Three hours a day. A lot of that was on social. And the top app I used there was WhatsApp for messaging my friends. I'm quite pleased with the middle bit that says productivity and finance apps. Uh, I spent two hours, 48 minutes on productivity and finance apps. But I'm kind of shocked three hours a day. Like, how does that even happen? And if I was to use that three hours a day to think about what I wanted to happen and actually take action towards my dream life, how far could I go? So my question to you is, like, do you what's your screen time say? Daniel, how many hours a day are you spending on your phone? I can see you looking. Lucy, like how much time are you spending on your phone? Are you able to see that stuff? Put it in the chat. I'd really like to know how much time are you spending on this? And Nathan asked, will this be posted to YouTube afterwards? Yes, Nathan, we will post this on YouTube afterwards. Daniel spends two hours, 38 minutes a day on his phone. That's half an hour less with me, uh, which is quite impressive. I like that. Katie, what are people on YouTube saying? I'm turning the microphone towards me because I've got feedback that people couldn't quite hear me. So uh, Mal says an hour and 24, Maggie, three hours, 39. Alex said three. Amy says eight hours, 50 minutes. I think we have a winner. Uh, Rachel, two and a half hours. Truly, one and a half. Kate, about an hour. Bryce, six. There's quite a range there, isn't it? But it seems to be like three, four-ish seems to be the average based on what people are putting here on YouTube. 
that's exactly what's happening in Zoom with Bridget at three and a half hours, Polly at three. Stacy's the winner here with five hours, 22. Uh, it's really fascinating how long we spend on our phones. Shout out to Zoe. She said seven hours, but I've been watching your videos. So if it <laughs> if you're using your phone to watch our videos, you may watch 24 hours a day. Thank you very much. Fair enough. Um, so what do you actually focus on daily? And we have a quick poll for this. And I wanted to know if you think of your day as 100 percent, what percentage of your day do you actually focus on what you want? Like your dream life, is it 10% of your day? Is it 5% of your day? If you're at work doing your job, you're not focusing on your dream life, I guess. Uh, if you are at home, when you get home from work, do you switch on Netflix or YouTube? Or do you actually start to think about the future you want and do things towards it? Uh, most of us run out of energy before we run out of time. And that's a real challenge because you get home after work and you don't have the energy to be able to work on what you want. I'd really like to know, please, if you're on catch up, use the QR code. If you're on YouTube, use the QR code or Katie's put the link in the chat and tell us that figure. Uh, and if we can up that, then we'll start to make progress towards where we want to go. One thing you said, Alan, that I would like to add to, you said that when people are at work, maybe they're thinking about work, but even within work, you can be thinking about what you do want versus what you don't want. Are you thinking, oh gosh, I hope I'm like, what if I miss this deadline and my boss is going to be annoyed with me versus thinking, wow, what if I could really help the people around me and bring joy to them and really help my customers? Exactly. I love that. Because even at work, we can focus on how bad the economy is as opposed to making progress. So let's keep moving on. I've got a very small exercise for you. Uh, I would like you please to think about something you are worried about. If you're a high achiever, please think about something you're stressed about. What are you stressed about? What are you worried about? Think of that thing. When you imagine it, what do you have to imagine to feel that feeling of worry or stress? Are you thinking about it going smoothly? Are you thinking about getting it done easily? Or are you seeing it going wrong? Are you worried you don't have enough time? Are you thinking it might not go right? So what we're going to do right now is a simple thing, which is to switch from worry to what we actually want. So with that thing that you were worried or stressed about, what if it went perfectly? I'd like you to imagine it going perfectly. Like it went well, you're stressed about the meeting, let's imagine it going well. You're stressed about the phone call, let's imagine the phone call going well. Whatever it is, I would like you to take your mind and actively move it to focus on what you want as an outcome. And when you do that, and start to imagine it going well, seeing someone saying yes, seeing the meeting going well, seeing your finances grow, whatever it is, does that change the way you feel about that item? Do you still feel stressed about it or are you feeling more excited to actually do something about it? Because what I've found is if I can stop worrying and start thinking about a positive action, an outcome and actually take action towards it, I'll start to actually make progress. So I want you to visualize the results you actually want and start to focus on that. Now, lots of times people say, oh, this visualization stuff, that's just like the secret, the movie, isn't it? Does this stuff actually work? Does it? Well, it only really works if you take action afterwards. So Donna says, yes, it helps to feel calmer, which is awesome. If you feel calm and then do nothing about it, the stress will come back. If you feel calm and take action, then you will help that to go away. So all of what we're talking about today only works if you take action afterwards. And the second thought I wanted to give you was we know the reverse works. So if you imagine about if you imagine what you don't want, we know that starts to create what you fear. 
So we know the reverse works. So we can start to think, well, maybe the positive works. If I imagine what I do want to happen and I start to focus on that and then take action, maybe things will happen. And Sophia says it's kind of exciting, which I love. If you imagine it going well, then you can start to get excited about it. Amber says, if it's too stressful, you have to stay, take a step back and then make sure to come back later. The stress, Amber and everyone listening, is quite often created in our mind by imagining a bad outcome. That creates the stress, that creates the pain. Uh, if there is a real thing happening, like Truly says my baby's sleep routine, if your baby is crying, that might well create stress. Hopefully you'll do something about that immediately. But most of the time, the problem is in our imagination. So if we can take our imagination and train it to focus on what we want and then take action, we start to move towards what we want, feel relaxed, and we're moving. And part of this is who cares if it works in that universe type woo-woo way if it feels good and helps you to take action towards a positive future it doesn't really matter so for me whether it works in that type of secret i attract and do all that other stuff exactly what i want i don't care it helps me to feel good it helps me to make action and i make more progress so for me that's all that really matters building on that if you're going to do this, then you might as well dream big. If you're going to see your future going well, you might as well dream about what you actually really want. Because so many of us limit ourselves with what's reasonable. So for me, I start dream dreaming. I'm going to help change the world and make it a more positive place. I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to be in love. I'm going to be Lego abundant and have a unlimited source of Lego in my life. Like if you're going to dream, you might as well dream big about exactly what you want. That also then helps you to feel excited. If you aren't excited about your future, that tells me you're not picturing a future you actually want. You're not picturing something exciting enough. You're not picturing something big enough to get you motivated. We could call it, you have limp goals. And no one wants limp goals. We want exciting goals that get you up in the morning, that make you excited to move forwards, that give you drive. If you're not feeling the drive and energy to create the future you want, it's because you haven't imagined one that's exciting enough for you to go for and the way you know it is you actually feel disappointed that you get tired i don't know if you've ever had this but at the end of the day you feel a bit disappointed you've got tired because there's more to do and you're excited about the future if that's the case you know you're winning in life if you're actually excited to stop doing what you're doing and working on your future then you probably haven't come up with the right version yet. And that's the simple test. Are you annoyed that you're falling asleep as opposed to excited to be stopping and getting on with watching Netflix? Katie has something to say. She's going to steal my microphone. Angela said something on YouTube that I thought maybe you could comment on, Alan. She said, sometimes I can be avoiding the stress and then notice I ignored something important I actually needed to act on, but I didn't see it because I was just looking at all the positives. What would you say about that? If you're always looking at the positives, are you going to miss something important that you could have seen if you were looking at the negatives as well? I love that. So I think the question is, does stress keep me safe? Uh, and what I would always say to you is notice worry and stress get the lesson from it like it's trying to tell you something you're worried about the presentation coming up you might be worried because you haven't practiced enough get the lesson practice and then go back to feeling happy afterwards so there's always a message in the stress or the worry or the thing there's a message for you like i'm worried about not having enough money okay got it i need to do something about that then you go back to focusing on what you do want, which is 
saving, investing, growing your income, whatever it is, and you focus on that. So the stress or the worry is a sign for you to do something about it. Your emotions are signals from your body to do something. So I think if you treat it like that, you won't miss something. You'll actually go, oh, I feel stressed about this. Uh, interesting. Okay, why am I stressed? Because I'm not prepared, because this, because that, whatever it is, I can do something about that and fo focus positively on creating that outcome that I want. So for me, stress is always the outcome. It's always the thing that helps you like understand what you need to do next. Katie put her hand up again. She's right next to me. Katie, tell me. Verinda had a comment on YouTube said, I'm afraid to think about the future and feel trapped. So how do we deal with that? If we're you know, scared to think about what might happen in the future um, and you're asking us to think about the future and what we want. That's interesting, isn't it? Verinda, what future are you imagining that makes you scared? Uh, that would always be interesting because I think like, what are you scared about in the future? Are you scared that it's not going to go right? Are you scared this? Are you scared that? Like, If you're scared about the future, you're focusing on what you don't want would be my assumption. So the question I always come back to is what do you want and how? what can you focus on? And maybe when we say the future, it's a very big nebulous thing. So maybe it's just what do I want to go well tomorrow? What do I want to go well this week? And I'll focus on that. This week, I'm going to focus on eating well. I'm going to focus on looking after the people in my life. Uh, what exactly is it? It might be small things this week. And as we get more excited about the future, we start to think bigger and bigger and bigger. So maybe take the word future and replace it with week to start with. And then maybe it's like month after that. And then maybe it's year after that. And you start to get excited. Like, what if this year went perfectly? And one of the exercises I love to do, which if you get a chance, it might be worth doing, is I pull out a notebook or I write it on my laptop and I think, OK, it is December 31st, 2024. And this year... I have, I've been, I've gone, I've done, and I write out all the things that I like, if it was the dream year, this would have happened. And then I look through it and I start to make it happen. It's a wonderful exercise to get excited because then you're starting with the end of the year in mind and you can start to plan what you want to do to be able to get to it. It's one of my favorite exercises. So we're going to move on to this next bit, which after you've visualized what you want, the key is to take the action that comes to you. So you sit there and think about the meeting going exactly as you want. And then hopefully an idea will pop into your mind and you go, I need to do this or I need to practice this or I need to say this. You dream about like, asking uh, your boss for a raise. Like imagine the meeting, what do you need to do to prepare? Then you take action immediately about it. So for me, when I do this in the morning, I think about what I want to happen. And then I immediately go, oh, I could do this to get closer to it. I could do this to get close to it. And I take one or two actions straight away that drive me towards the future that I want. So if you're imagining financial independence, you go, okay, the action I can take today is... Well, I can avoid buying coffee and I can save my money or have a coffee at work or I can do this or I can do that or I can speak to this person or I can watch the next episode of Rebel Finance School. I can do the thing. Whatever it is, you've got to take that action immediately. The challenge comes when you're rowing in the opposite direction from the people around you. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, sometimes family members, partners, people around you have different goals to you and they row in a different direction. Now, obviously, this has never happened to Katie and I. Uh, Are you talking about me? Maybe. For many years, my goal has been to have lots of amazing things to do. I want to do cool things. I want to get out there. I want to create cool stuff. 
Uh, and Katie's goal was to have an empty to-do list. Can you see how there may be a conflict between those two things? Katie was imagining everything was done and it was just peaceful. And I'm imagining all the big projects possible. And we didn't really know this at the time, but this, this caused so many fights, so much pain, because we were literally rowing in opposite directions. So do you know if you're rowing in the same direction as the people around you? Maybe it's the person you're sat next to. Maybe it's the person who's in the kitchen making a tea whilst you're watching this. Like, are you rowing in the same direction? Are you visualizing the same future as the people around you? Because if you're rowing in opposite directions, it can get quite painful. Because one of you gets excited about a bright future and heads that way. And the other one goes, whoa, 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 that's not the future I want. And they head the other way. So I'd like you to do this little exercise. If you've got a pen and paper in front of you, awesome. If you've got a phone, you can do it on that. I'd like you please to write down the names of the five people closest to you. Whoever it is. Hopefully uh, you write down the person right next to you on the couch. Um, maybe it's someone you know, maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your partner, maybe it's your boss at work. Who are the five people closest to you? Write down their names. And then when you've got those names, write down what you think their goals in life are. Like if you had to summarize their goal in life with a sentence or two, this person is trying to, this person is aiming to, this person just wants to be happy. This person is focused on getting promoted at work. This person just like wants to do jigsaws and not anything else. Like, what is it that those people are trying to do? And if you don't entirely know, this is a really good thing because you can go and ask them over the next few days. And maybe they don't know. But my question is, are you going in the same direction as those people around you? And one of the biggest things that happens with finances, which can really cause problems, is one of you wants to save and invest and one of you doesn't. And you've got kids in your life that want to do X and you want to do Y. And you've got... Sophia said in the chat, which I think is really interesting, well, what if you put our kids on there, but they are just trying to get by in society's terms, like they're teenagers, they're just trying to get by. Well, maybe you could help them to see there is more than just getting by. Maybe you can help them see something they want to do, a hobby, something they want to learn. So they have a focus and direction. Because if we're focused on just getting by, that's going to create a certain result in our life. If we have a true direction and focus, it's going to change and do a completely different result in our life. Now, it can be tough with some of the people around you, but what I'd like to suggest to you is you ask them to do this kind of thing with you. You ask them, do you want to work with me on getting to financial independence? Do you want to work with me on improving our finances? Do you want to work with me on getting enough money to go on holiday? Like I would love to work with you and you can find alignment on what you want to do. And I wrote a message, maybe this will help you, but maybe you could send them a, a message and say, hi, insert name. Like I found a workshop on designing the life you want I want to work on improving my world. Would you be open? Would you be open? Would you be open to watching this video with me and talking about it and working out how might we actually use it? I couldn't think of anyone I'd rather work on this stuff with. Maybe you could send someone a message right now and say, I want to work on this with you. 
Uh, maybe it's the person who's in the kitchen behind you and you can shout to them. This is the point. I want to work with you on this. But that's one of the ways you can start to find alignment on what you're doing is ask people to work with you on this. Bibiana says, maybe it's ourselves. Yes, if you've got some self-defeating habits and you're like, you want to go over here, but you keep ripping yourself over there, definitely find alignment internally and then you can find alignment around you. Uh, Vanessa says, we've talked about it a lot. That's awesome. I don't think you can ever talk about the future you dream of with the people you love enough. Like working on it together creates an entirely different energy. If you don't have someone around you, then you can use the Facebook group. Like we built this Rebel Finance School Facebook group so that we could come together as a community and work on our finances, work on creating an extraordinary life. That is what we wanted to do. So you could go into the Facebook group and say, I'm looking for a buddy to work with this on. And across the Rebel Finance Schools, people have created incredible friendships with different people. Sometimes it's easier to work on your future with people you don't know than it is the people you do know. So find someone that you can work with on this. Uh, Alex Payne says, my brilliant wife introduced me to you guys. That's awesome. So Alex has already got someone he can work with. Uh, and Alex's wife has actually like dragged him along to this, which I love. So they're now starting to come in alignment. And that's what we want for you is to work together with people. Now, I wanted to give you this resource. It's a podcast that I recorded about coming up with ideas for the future. Because you've all said you sort of know roughly three or four where you're heading. Hopefully this podcast episode, you could listen to it uh, together. You could listen to it on a walk. You could both listen to it on the way into work. Come up with ideas together. Come back together and go, what's the thing we really want to focus on? So I created this because we can't do everything in a 90-minute workshop. So I created this resource for you to be able to um, come up with ideas for the future. So you can find it on Apple Podcasts. You can find it on Google Podcasts. This is the link to Spotify, available on all good podcasting platforms. So you can find that and have a go with it. Katie's put the link in the chat as well. But that's to come up with ideas together to focus and move forwards. All these links are in the YouTube description if you're watching on Catch Up. Thank you, Katie. Right. Exercise time. I would like you please to take a deep breath and think of a big goal for the future. Maybe it's launching a podcast, writing a book, getting promoted, being uh, mayor of Maidenhead. I don't know what your big goal is. What is your big goal? Have a think of it. And when you've got that goal, did you feel excited? Or was there immediately the inner voice of doubt that said, uh oh, I'm not sure we can do this, or I can't do this because, or this might happen because? Sometimes when I think of the really big goals, my inner voice of doubt immediately attacks me with something about why it won't happen. Did any of you have that happen? When you thought of the big goal, what was the first thing that came to mind? Daniel said dread. That's not an ideal response to the big goal, is it? It's like, here's my dream future. Ah! <laughs> Uh, and it's fascinating the different responses we have like we should be we should be excited about the future but our brain goes oh ooh, and it's trying to keep you safe or it's trying to do something it's incredible what happens with that but what i want you to do is if you feel dread if you feel anything about like oh i can't do this or i can't do this i want you to celebrate because you just found a limiting belief you just uncovered a limiting belief. Yeah, Daniel is celebrating, which I love. I can see you in there. Um, Amber says scared, but still excited, which I love it. The fear comes from a limiting belief. And we celebrate that we found it 
and then we can tackle it. So if that voice comes in, it's because you don't think it's possible for you, because you think it could go wrong, because you don't think you have the skills. There will be a reason. We need to uncover that reason, look at it and write it down and actually think about it in the cold, hard light of day. Because that limiting belief, there's a message in there for you that will help you make better progress. So I want you to celebrate. If you ever think of a huge goal and then go, I can't do it or this or that, that's because you found a limiting belief. And then I wanna give you three ways to destroy limiting beliefs. So I've got three ways to destroy a limiting belief. Number one is write it down, understand it, and then choose a different belief. I don't feel like I can believe I can achieve financial independence because I'm too old. It's like, well, you can change that limiting belief to doesn't matter what age I am. I can always improve my finances. You can go, well, I'm excited about getting in shape. And then you feel like, oh, but I don't know if it's worth the effort. Well, what's a different belief you could have that would actually help you feel good about it? So your first job is to understand the limiting belief and then choose a new belief that you will actively reinforce. The second way is do not give oxygen to the limiting belief. What do I mean by that? Lots of people dwell or focus on the limiting belief. I can't do this because I don't know. there's something, they dwell and focus on it and they give it life. The more focus you give, the larger it gets and the harder it is to defeat. So my advice to you is as soon as it comes up, snap your focus forwards to what you actually want. And by changing your focus, you're starving the limiting belief of oxygen and giving oxygen to what you actually want to achieve. And the third one is hang out with people who believe the opposite. The five people around you you will become who you're surrounded by. If you think of the five people closest to you, people's salaries normally end up in a similar place. People's beliefs normally end up in a different place. Hang out with people that believe the opposite with you. It will stretch your mind and stretch your beliefs. So if you don't think it's possible to become financially independent, find a bunch of people who do and hang out with them. Ask them why, talk to them, question them. If you don't believe it's possible to build a business making money doing what you love, find people who've done it and hang out with them, create a group, join a group. The people you surround yourself with will either reinforce your limiting belief or challenge it. I think that's sometimes why people don't like hanging out with me because I definitely challenge their limiting beliefs and ask them to go for what they want. And then they feel quite uncomfortable. Um, so if you want to hang out with me and be challenged and actually make progress on what you're doing, it will make a huge difference. Uh, my wonderful wife, Katie, has her hand up as well. Do you want to come around so anyone can mm -hmm. see you as you say this rather than being the voice from the side? Here's Katie. Hi, everyone. Um, talking about hanging out with people that believe the opposite. Maybe you don't know anyone in the real world. The real world. That believes the opposite. So who and how could you hang out with people that do believe the opposite? Reading books, that's hanging out with people. You're hanging out with the author, listening to podcasts, watching inspirational YouTube videos, joining our Facebook group, joining any other Facebook group where people are working towards similar thing that you're working towards. It doesn't have to be people that you necessarily know in real life. There are other ways of finding these people that can lift you up and that can help you change your beliefs. Exactly. And you don't have to ditch the people you love. Uh, just if they held the negative ones, maybe you spend 10% less time with them and 10% more time with people who do have those positive beliefs. It makes such a difference being surrounded by people who have energy, enthusiasm, creative power. They believe anything is possible. It will change the way you feel, absolutely change the way you feel. Now, I would love you to write this down for me. 
And it's a critical sentence that I've repeated to myself many times. And it is, we have enough examples to prove that it is possible for anyone to create an extraordinary life. Because sometimes we lose focus of that and go, well, it's not possible. Like, I don't know anyone who's done it. I can't do this. This doesn't happen. We have enough examples. There are enough examples of people who started in worse situations than you and built incredible lives and done amazing things. Like We have enough examples to prove that it can be done. But people like to forget that and they like to say things such as, well, it's all right for you because it's all right for you because you are. It's all right for you because you don't have kids. It's all right for you because this. It's all right for you because of that. It's all right for you because you're Alan. Whatever it is, all they like to say, I can't do that because. I can't do that because I live here. I can't do that because of this. I can't do that because. And you say to people, like, you can do anything. They go, well, I can't really, can I, because. I can't do this because. I can't do that because. It's a really important thought that you get to keep the limitations you fight for. You get to keep the limitations you fight for. So if you start going, well, it's all right for you because you are fighting to be trapped by your limiting, limiting beliefs. As soon as you argue for why you can't do something, you will start to actually prove yourself right that you cannot do it. You're literally fighting for what you don't want. And I find that crazy. I've run rebel business schools around the world for about 15 years. And people will come up to me after a workshop on five ways to build a business with no money. And they will say, well, that's all right because, or I can't do this because I don't have a degree, because I don't have the money, because this. And they're arguing with me that they can't do it. And for about a decade, I'd argue back with them and defeat their beliefs one by one. But I've, like, I'm literally fighting with people for their possibilities and I find it crazy how much of my life I have to argue. Katie was featured in the Sun newspaper for retiring at 35. And the title was something like, Woman Explains How She Retired at 35 with a Million Invested. I'm still, uh, we're still tickled and amused every time that it says Woman Explained. It's like that was the descriptor they used for Katie. Uh, but Woman Explains How She Retired at 35. Do you know how many of those comments were negative? In the comments underneath of people saying, that's great for her, I can't do it because of this. Oh, she's a wealthy this, she's a wealthy that, oh, this. And they attacked us on the comments. People literally want to fight us to prove that we're wrong, that they can be successful. So my question to you is, do you want to fight to have the limitations you have or are you willing to let them go and start dreaming for a bigger future because we have enough examples to prove that it's possible for anyone anyone yes that means you lucy yes that means you daniel yes that means you robert yes that means all of you we have enough examples to prove that it's possible for anyone to create an extraordinary life we just have to take the action and do it. The challenge we have is that your brain has one purpose. Do you know what the purpose of your brain is? Uh, do you know what the purpose of your brain is? If you could write it in the chat, tell me, what is the purpose of your brain? People are looking confused. It's like, I don't know, Alan, it's just up there. I don't really use it very often. It's gathering dust. Uh, to keep you alive, Donna says to communicate. We've got keep you alive is coming up a lot. Keep us safe. Nathan says survival. Your brain is designed to keep you alive and safe. That's it. Uh, 
Someone says, my brain, Robert says, my brain is designed to worry. Yes, it is, because that's what that's how it keeps you safe. It like literally worries about what it can kill you, what can hurt you to try and keep you safe. Your brain is not designed for happiness. The like old programming is there just for survival. That's it. It's designed to keep you safe, not happy. That's why I'm trying to say to you, you've got to take control of your brain because that old programming of keeping you safe is it's less relevant in the modern day because there are less risks that could actually kill you. So in the old days, we worried about saber-toothed tigers, bears, starving, like there were genuine concerns. Next time you go to Tesco's, how likely it is you're going to be attacked by a bear or not make it home? The chances of you making it home is incredibly highly successful. But we still get nervous about phone calls. We get nervous about meetings. We fear these things and our brain is trying to keep us safe. But the chances of us not surviving the next meeting on the phone call are very low. What we need to do is take control of the brain and get it to focus on what we want it to focus on. If we're constantly worrying what we've done is we've left our brain to its own devices and it has the untamed imagination that thinks about all the things that could go wrong. Uh, Polly says she's just back. She was grabbing the other half of her brain from the fridge. <laughs> Glad you're keeping it on ice. Uh, Katie has something to say on this. Katie, coming back to the screen. No, just a quick one. Rachel says that her husband just made it back from Tesco, so all good. <laughs> I'm glad he made it back. But your brain is not designed to make you happy. Your brain is designed to keep you safe. You have to actively take control to create the future you want. So you need to positively visualize the future you want. Robert, if you're worrying all the time about different things, you've allowed your brain to focus on what it doesn't want. I want to ask you to take control and focus on what you do want. And remember, you're not alone. There are plenty of people around you you can do this with. You can do it with people in real life. You can do it in the Facebook group. You can do it with other people. And do you believe in my power to make things happen and to create an extraordinary life? Do you believe that I can do it? There's silence, which is a little bit worrying. Robert kind of nodded half Lucy's now laughing. Cell says, yes, that makes me feel much better. Um, I have a really strong power to create things and make things happen. But I'm no smarter than you. I'm no cleverer than you. I'm no different to you. I'm just a normal human being that does these things as well. I get sucked into focusing on what I don't want sometimes. And then I have to slap my face back and look at what I do want Bridget says you're the one living the amazing life. Bridget, you can too, because I believe in your power. I believe in your power to create, to build, to make exactly what you want. I believe you can create anything you want too. And maybe you can borrow some of my belief in you. Because I truly believe you can create anything and you might not have proved that you can create anything yet, but that doesn't mean you don't have the potential and the power to be able to do it. So, quick pause. What have you learnt so far? Please put the one top thing you've learnt in the chat. I'd love to know, what have you learnt? Uh, Polly says, I need to borrow your belief. Polly, you can have my belief. I believe in your power to do it. And if we were face to face, I would stare you in the eyes and say, I believe in your power to create. So what's one thing you've learned? Uh, Donna says, how to tackle limiting beliefs. I love that. Stephen says, challenging living limiting beliefs. Awesome. Lucy's focus on what you want. Andy says brains are complicated. Yes, they are. Uh, we just need to put some reins around it and control it and be able to focus on what we want. Um, 
Robert says, you are the one who can make the change. Robert, I'm assuming you're talking about like you as in everyone, not me specifically. Uh, just to confirm, only you, you have the power to make the change. Daniel says, hanging out with the right people. Stacy says, you get what you focus on. Bridget says, I'm the only one getting in my way. Yes, Bridget, that is exactly right. Davinda says, have more clarity on what you want and focus on it. Brilliant. William says, believe in yourself that you need to achieve. I, I believe in you, William. Fran says, the five people closest to you influence and the effect. Uh, Sophia says, the root of where the mindset is going is essential. Hmm. Kathy says, focus on the future, stay positive and trust. Katie's put her hand up for some YouTube comments. Derek says, a reminder to direct my focus where I want it to go, not where it automatically goes. Erin says, I need to amp up my life goals. Alex says, be careful at Tesco. Um, G-Y, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Griffey, sorry, I butchered that. Take action. That is so key. Lucy, surround yourself with people who hold similar beliefs to you. Angela, action, 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 but the right action that is. Uh, truly, Shelley Marie says it's been a fantastic reminder to focus on what I do want each day. Some lovely comments there. Thank you for everyone on YouTube. And if you're watching on Catch Up, please do put it in the comments so that we know what you're thinking. Yes. Even if you're watching on Catch Up, we see all the comments and we would love to see them. Uh, Amber wrote a great one, which is have a good support group around you. That makes such a difference. And if you don't have one at home, build one. Lots of people say, well, I just don't have the people around me. Well, find them. It makes such a difference. Right. Uh, Julie says, stop listening to that inner voice that says it's hard and you can't do it. Absolutely. That's just untamed imagination. We're going to scrap that, uncover the limiting belief and focus forwards. Right. My challenge to you. My challenge to you is to clean your thinking. Yes, that picture does make sense. It's me with a cloth and a spray because we're going to clean our thinking. So we're going to choose six scenes, goals, ideas, mini videos in our head about what the future looks like. So Robert might see himself lying on the beach with a margarita. Lucy might be imagining... I don't know, no, Lucy reacted well to that one. Maybe that's Lucy's vision, not Robert's. Uh, but it's like, what is your vision? And I'll tell you what mine are in a second, but six like mini scenes. And then we're going to create in our mind, or maybe you want to print out pictures, little visuals for each one. So mini visuals for each one. So we might think of it as like six mini movie scenes. So mine is waking up next to the beach, then I have a second one about healthy. So I see myself running down the beach and doing chin ups and being healthy and fit. And then I see myself creating videos and content with Katie. And I imagine myself doing that. But you create mini visuals for each one uh, to see your life exactly as you want it. My next scene is actually seeing people saying thank you for workshops that we've done. Uh, someone finds me on the street and says, I did your workshop, I did it, and it worked. And we get those by email. And every time we get a message like that, it fills my heart with joy. So I visualize that. And then that creates the action for what I want to do to do more. So six scenes, create visuals for each. And then my challenge to you is for 30 days to visualize it each and every day for five minutes. That's it. I've seen how much screen time you have. I know you can find five minutes a day. Going to hold this against you now. <laughs> I know you can find five minutes a day at some stage. Just don't use Instagram. Every time you log into Instagram, think I'm going to visualize positively about my future instead or whatever it is. Just five minutes a day. Imagine the future you want. If you get one of those, like, you can't do this because, celebrate because you found a limiting belief. Daniel, if you get another feeling of dread, celebrate, you found a limiting belief, write it down and let's destroy it. And then go back to visualizing positively the future you want. So focus on that goal. 
Now, what happens to me is when I focus on the goal and think about it, it actions come to mind. I need to do this because I need to do that because and actions come to mind. So I want you to take one of those actions immediately. Oh, I should ring this person. Oh, I should post on Facebook about this. Oh, I should do this for my work. Take that action immediately because nothing happens unless you do it. No one else is going to build your life for you. So you've got to take that action. And maybe you can get your team to do it with you. And by team, I mean the person you're sat on the couch with, the person who's in the kitchen, your friends, the group of people on Facebook that you do it with. Maybe that's it. Now, Alex says six scenes is quite a lot. Uh, it is and it isn't. Like if I, if I said to you, create 30 scenes, that would probably seem like quite a lot. Like six scenes is fairly easy to remember after you've done it a few times. And it covers a lot of the areas of your life. So you can have one about health. You can have one about work. You can have one about your relationships. Uh, my final one is falling asleep with Katie and lying together hugging. Like that to me is a wonderful life. And I visualize that. And I'm quite fortunate. It happens most nights when she's not annoyed with me. Uh, Katie, did you have something to add? No. Okay. Uh, right. Here's one of my film strips that I created. Like, I don't really care how you do it. You could do it in PowerPoint. Like I saw Katie and I going to the theme parks to do Disney stuff. There's us creating content. There's the beach. There's me being Lego abundant. That is me and Katie in Lego. Uh, there's us cycling and being healthy. There's Katie being wealthy. But they're just six scenes that I visualize for a little bit. So that's my challenge to you is for 30 days, focus on what you want and then take the actions that come to you. And don't really care how you do it create a vision board, journal about it, close your eyes and think about each scene as the ideal version, print out some pictures, like see the end of motion, see yourself happy, um, see your boss at work saying great job, see the end results, the end thing, see yourself driving the car you want to drive, see yourself saving the amount of money you want whatever it is, I don't care if you do it in a digital notebook, a paper notebook, it doesn't really matter. Just do it the way that works for you. Or you could do it in Donegan style and you could do it in PowerPoint. Obviously, that's our preferred method. Right. The message here is you create your future. No one else is going to create your future for you. You create it. No one. And I truly believe that you can create anything. So you might as well create something epic. Like if you're going to create something, create something amazing, create something truly epic. Because if thoughts become things, well, you might as well think epic thoughts. Not only will you feel inspired, it will feel nice, and then it'll inspire you to take action. So if thoughts become things, think epic things. And one of the statements that I've been living my life by for many years now is the extraordinary belongs to those that create it. What does that mean? If you want an extraordinary life, if you want to do extraordinary things, no one's going to hand it to you. Did anyone come to your school and say to you, would you like an extraordinary life? Lucy, did anyone come to your school and offer you an extraordinary life? Daniel, no. Robert, no. Everyone's shaking their heads. No one came to my school and offered me an extraordinary life. Like, I have to make it happen. No one else is going to build it for you. No one. You have to build it. Couple of things. You already have an extraordinary life. Just the fact that you were born and you are living on a world that spins at so many hundred miles of an hour and floats through the universe is quite extraordinary. You already have an extraordinary life in many ways. But what I'm really interested in is the next chapter. What's the next chapter for you? What's the next chapter for Christina, for Shelley, for Robert? Like, what is the next chapter of your book? What would an extraordinary chapter be like for you? My vision of an extraordinary life is 
traveling around the world, going to beaches, eating amazing food, watching football matches in Brazil, helping people online. That's my vision of an extraordinary life. The fascinating bit is everyone's life is different. Now, I had an interesting reaction. I was doing a goal setting workshop quite some while ago, and I spoke about goals and going after them and making things happen. And this lady said to me, she actually got quite annoyed. She looked at me and she said, I don't want a goal. I just want a new dining room table and dinner with my family each night. Can you guess what my head said immediately? She said that. That is a goal. <laughs> a new dining room table and dinner with your family is something to aim at. But what she was doing was she was judging that against the word extraordinary. Don't make me do extraordinary things. I just want this. And what I want to say to you is having dinner with your family every night at a beautiful kitchen table and listening to each other is extraordinary. How many families do that? How many families have created an environment where they can sit together and have that? Like, don't judge what you want. Live it because it is different for everyone. What your version of extraordinary is will be different to mine. Lucy's extraordinary is different to Robert's. Robert's extraordinary is different to Christina's. Every version is different. Extraordinary means something different to every person on the planet. Let me ask you a question. What's your perfect breakfast? Please write it in the chat. Like, what's your perfect breakfast? Where would it be? What would you eat? What's your perfect breakfast? Amber says full English. I love that. Lucy says crumpets. That's awesome. Donna says oatmeal. That's definitely not my version of extraordinary, Donna, but that's okay. Fabian says changua. Fabian says changua. Fabian, I'm afraid you're wrong on that one. Uh, Eggs Benedict says Christina. Croissants. Uh, my flower patch says a thick stack of pancakes with bacon and maple syrup. Oh, man, I'm hungry now looking at all of these. Like every single one of you is writing a slightly different answer. What I want to say to you is your answer is the right one for you. And don't compare it with anyone else's. Don't judge anyone else's. Just go for what you want. If that's your dream breakfast, visualize it, create it, eat it, enjoy it, and then try something different. Every single person has a different version of what the dream breakfast is, what a dream life is, what it is. Dorna says, having ackee and saltfish on the beach in Jamaica. Uh, <laughs> Dorna, I actually really love that version. Can I come with you for your dream breakfast, please? Um, some of these are fantastic. I'm going to keep this list. Everyone is different. And this is what I want to say to you. Don't judge your goals. If you're excited about playing video games, do it. If you're excited about making money doing this, if you're excited about getting a job, if you're excited about traveling, I don't care what it is. Stop judging it and do it. Do what's right for you. Please stop judging your own goals and live exactly the life you want to live. Society can sling a hook, go away. There's so many swear words I want to use. Decide on your dream version and do it for yourself. Because if you don't create your dream life, no one else is going to create it for you. So you have to do it. The next thing I would want to say to you is the extraordinary is rooted in the mundane. What does that mean? If you want to create an extraordinary breakfast, it means going to the supermarket to buy stuff. That's a mundane, normal activity. If you want to build a business, it means getting on the phone, making phone calls. It means sending emails. Like the extraordinary future you want is rooted, founded, created by simple tasks you do every day. Financial independence is created by taking £10 and investing it. It's small things you do every day. So the extraordinary is built by small actions. 
And those are the small actions you need to actually take. Now, on motivation, hopefully you're feeling motivated right now to go and build your life and do this thing. But so many people wait for motivation to hit them. It's like I'm waiting. Motivation hasn't come. Still not come. Maybe I'll turn on Netflix and wait for it to come. I'm still not motivated. Here's the thing. People have got it completely wrong. You don't get hit by motivation. You create motivation. The act of taking action helps you to feel motivated. So you need to jump off the couch. You need to get up and do the action because you will not feel motivated until after you take action. And this was really, really impacted for me. I have several friends who just say things like, I'm not excited by that. And it's almost as if it is the responsibility of the thing to make them excited. Oh, that course doesn't excite me. Oh, it doesn't excite me to work on my finances. It's not your finances job to make you excited. It's your job. It's not work's job to make you excited. It's your job to get excited. And I think people really get this backwards. It's like, I'm waiting for motivation. I'm waiting to feel excited. Stop waiting, take action, create excitement. Do you know how to create excitement in your body? If you were excited, what would your body be doing? People are looking at each other confused. Uh, one person raised their eyebrows. That was Is that as good as it gets with excitement? There... <laughs> You create excitement, you get excited about something, you imagine it going well, you see the future, you create excitement in your body and you go and do it. You know how to build excitement. Never wait for the things around you to help you be excited. Create excitement for what you actually want to do it. Donna says dancing round, like that will create excitement. Get excited for the thing and then go and do it. That's how you make progress. So you create motion, you take action every day. And the question I would love you to repeat to yourself is what's one thing I can do now that will take me towards my vision? Look at the person next to you, write down an answer, ask them what's one thing we can do right now to move ourselves towards our vision. And if we repeat this, it will get us into the habit of taking action and finding excitement. And if you come across a limiting belief what you, while you do it, celebrate, get rid of the limiting belief and go back to focusing on your goal. It will keep coming up. You are human like me. We are all human. It will keep coming back. Just keep focusing on the goal. And there's one final message before I wrap up and chat to you about questions and thoughts and all of that stuff is stop being reasonable. In life, we are trained to be reasonable in our expectations. Like I'll go for this thing because I feel like it's in my range of possibility. The fascinating thing is that everyone ends up going for the reasonable goals. So it's actually far more competitive to go for the mid-range job, to go for the mid-range outcome, because that's what everyone is going for. 90% of people are competing for the same jobs. If you stop being reasonable and start being unreasonable and go for the outrageously big thing, go for the job you don't think you can get, go for the thing that's just way out there, you will find there is less competition because no one else thinks it's possible. And it might just be you and a few others going for it. 90% of people don't think it's possible to reach financial independence, so they don't ever bother trying People don't believe it's possible to create the life you want, so they don't bother trying. They go for the reasonable thing. 
if you want to waste your time competing against 90% of other people for an average outcome, go for it. I choose to do the extraordinary and the exceptional because I know there's less people competing for it. Do you have any thoughts about that sentence, that comment? Stop being reasonable. Because I think, I believe it's far easier to achieve something that is way out there than it is to achieve something that everyone else is going for. So I'd I want you to go for the biggest thing. I want you to go for the thing that lights you up, that gets you excited. Satam says, an incredible idea. I'm job hunting at the moment. This is a great thought. I love it. Go for the thing you don't think is possible. There'll be less people applying for it. It will just change the way you look for it. Ellie says, very insightful. Thank you, Ellie. Please use it and go and do it. It's incredible how it impacts you. Alex Payne says, exciting thoughts. Alex, I am excited every day about doing this stuff. I love it. So I feel excited to take action and move forwards with my life. We have a little poll. This is a really important poll because it's the one that we get measured on by the funders. So please, will you fill this out for me? Uh, You've got two questions. On a scale of one to 10 before the course, how excited did you feel before the workshop to take action and move your life forwards? And then this is the QR code to find the thing or Katie's put in the link in the chat. Please, please fill this in for us because this is the one we get measured on. And then after the workshop, how excited did you feel after the workshop to take action and move forwards on your dream life? Uh, I'm kind of hoping that you've made a little bit of distance and you're excited about the future, but please on, like, answer this for us. This is the one that we need to capture to show whether the workshop actually worked or not and helped you to feel excited about the future. So please fill this out right now. Click on the link. If you're watching this on YouTube, catch up. Yes, you too, please click on the link. Uh, scan the QR code, fill it in right now. Yes, that means you too, Daniel. Yes, that means you too, Julie. Everyone there, please fill it in. We love data. Katie loves data. She's going to have fun analyzing this afterwards and creating uh, pretty uh, charts from it. And did you already say if you're watching on Catch Up, please, please, please do this as well. The link is either that QR code on the screen or the link is also in the description of this video. Yes, it is. Exactly. So there's that. Please fill it in now. It means a huge amount to us. Christina says, answered the form uh, and feel more excited to reach for a bigger life than I originally thought I wanted. Christina, that's brilliant. Uh, S. Grant says, thank you so much. This is definitely a great pre-course to the FIRE course for those who might not be in a place to have the self-confidence to move forward with that information. I love that. Uh, Alex enjoyed the course as well. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. So please fill that out. Click on the link, fill that out. And I've got your homework for you because, well, it wouldn't be a course with the Donegans if there wasn't homework. Um, do I have your permission to set you a bit of homework? Got to have a little bit of homework. Um, so here it is, your homework. Make a list of visions for your dream life. This is the six, like, school movie script, the six movie film script bits that we spoke about. Create that six scene movie. Visualize it every morning. Notice what action comes to mind and then take that action immediately. Like get excited and do it every single day. Maybe it's send a message. Maybe it's do this. Maybe it's do that. The reason for this is the extraordinary is rooted in mundane actions we take every day. So you've got to take that action every single day and then focus relentlessly on what you want focus relentlessly on what you want if you catch yourself having a negative thought if you catch yourself focusing on what you don't want take control of your mind focus it back on what you do want and then please do this with the people around you they're so important. Uh, if you don't have people around you that support you, find them in the Facebook group. There are people that can help you do this. And then 
we had an invitation earlier on, a little speech bubble, come up with your own wording, but send an invitation to someone you care about to come on this journey with you to create your version of an extraordinary life. That is your homework. The final thought is the best gift you can give the people around you is your happiness. Imagine if you were happy, focused on creating your own life, working positively forwards, you would inspire everyone around you. You'll inspire your kids, you'll inspire the people around you, you'll inspire your partner. The best gift you can give someone is your happiness and you're the only person who can give it. So focus on your life, feel like you're making progress and create that in your world. It will make to everyone around you. So we've come to the end of the mini workshop. Uh, the next workshop is on Thursday at 8 p.m. UK time, and it is called The Money Game. Play it and win it. So next Thursday will be on at 8 p.m. Uh, as normal. If you haven't filled out the the form and join the course, please do that. You can join the Donegan mailing list and we'll let you know about all the different workshops we do and the different events we do. So we've got lots more coming up. There's six more workshops over the next six weeks. Louise says, are all the sessions 90 minutes? Uh, there or thereabouts, 90 minutes, two hours, um, something like that. And we'll we'll have a break next time, I promise. Katie has something to say. We're going to hang out on Zoom answering questions. So I think we'll close the YouTube. But if you have questions and want to come over to the Zoom, I've put the link in the YouTube chat, obviously on your catch up. I'm afraid uh, you won't be able to do that. But if you are watching live on YouTube and you want to come over and ask us questions in the Zoom, I've put the link in the chat and I'll do it again now as well. Perfect. Thank you very much, Katie. Thank you to everyone who has joined in on this course. I'm going to end the YouTube right now and we will start doing the q a if you want to come to zoom to chat that's great if you want to leave that's awesome you might be excited about creating your version of extraordinary if you are go and do it thank you for tuning in you rock make your dream life happen okay